One of the most surprising things that my cardiologist talked to me about after my recent heart attack was the fact that the type of heart attack that I had could have been a terminal event for many individuals. However, he said because I work out, I take care of myself, and obviously I'm in good cardiovascular health, that meant there was minimal, if any, damage done to my heart after that event. That brings up a whole topic of things that we don't talk that much about when it comes to scuba diving. We all talk about the best gear possible out there, making sure it's well maintained, make sure it's serviced and it's ready to go underwater and it's safe. But what about the gear we carry about with us every single day of our lives? This gear, us, our body, our minds. That's what this show's topic is going to be about. We're gonna talk about fitness to dive, both physically and mentally, what it takes, what kind of things should we be thinking about. You don't have to be a marathon runner to be a diver. But there are some things that you can do personally to make sure that if the unexpected happens when you're underwater, hopefully your body and mind are fit enough to be able to handle that so you can return to the sport that you love. Welcome to Everything Scuba. <laughs> So the last time I strapped on this bad boy uh, was about six weeks ago, May 13th, 2021. Uh, I was in the Socorro Islands. Uh, if you guys follow our channel, you possibly know what happened. That day I had a heart attack. Um, I have no vessel disease, I'm a healthy guy, but I had a problem that they call Taco Subo Syndrome, which I'm gonna let you Google that one to figure that out. Today is a very exciting day, and also a little bit of a nerve wracking day. I gotta get back on the horse, get back underwater. Uh, been through a lot of testing in the past month. Can't say thank you enough to the doctors at Mayo Clinic. Uh, put me through a whole host of tests, echocardiograms, MRIs, all show it abnormal heart function, no damage to my heart, uh, even spent some time with the hyperbaric medicine uh, doctors up there who know all about diving and dive physiology and they've cleared me to get back in the water. So over the past few weeks uh, I've been back in the gym starting to work out a little bit again, uh, trying to take care of myself and uh, in this video we're going to talk a little bit about preparedness for a diver. We're always trying to take care of our gear. Let's talk a little bit about taking care of ourselves. Also, thank you to everybody out there who continues to support our channel. I've received lots of just awesome messages from people uh, wishing me well uh, after the incident. Uh, a couple people in particular, I want to thank Mike's Big Adventure and Dr. Mack for sharing your uh, experiences with your heart issues in the past. Uh, I will tell you that uh, the first uh, week, 10 days after this occurred, I was pretty down. Uh, I wasn't sure, you know, was I, was I going to be able to get back in the water again, do the things that I love to do. Uh, and so to hear stories of people who have gone through similar incidents and worked their way back into the world of diving, I can't thank you guys enough. That was really uh, strengthening to me. We are here on uh, one of my favorite places in the world to be, uh, St. Croix Island. Uh, we're at the Frederickstead Pier. Again, I could dive this place every single day of the, of the rest of my life. Uh, which is hopefully a long time and uh, it's just a beautiful place to dive. Warm, blue, crystal clear water. Uh, it's a nice gentle environment to get myself back underwater. But right now I'm going to strap this bad boy on. Let's come diving with me. We're going to see what's underneath the pier today and we'll chat to you in a little bit. <music> So the pier was a little cloudy today. Uh, visibility was not great. Uh, we made our way out to Cane Bay and uh, had a great dive out there also. Uh, did we see any amazing, unbelievable animals? No, 
but it was amazing and unbelievable all the same. We divers sometimes take the underwater environment for granted, and after what's happened to me recently, uh, I'm never going to do that again. So on to fitness to dive. Uh, it's an area that uh, maybe isn't covered or is not a very sexy topic to talk about. I am not a shining example of a skinny waif of a human being. I like to eat, I like to have fun, uh, a few alcoholic beverages now and again. Uh, and so all of those things can maybe add up over time. I'm gonna throw a few statistics at you as we talk about this. Uh, the first of which is eye-opening. One third of all diver deaths currently are related to cardiovascular events either during, pre, or post-dive. Uh, this comes from Divers Alert Network. It is the leading cause for divers to die. Not failure of gear, not uh, doing crazy things underwater, it is the failure of the cardiovascular system, and that's exactly what happened to me uh, during my incident. Many of the times we, we look at diving as this very relaxing, easygoing, super calm event. Uh, your heart rate really doesn't get up there. Uh, I always joke with students that if, if your heart rate is racing, maybe you're doing some things wrong, but there are times when your heart rate is going to get up there. So in terms of physical strength, the gear that we weigh is 40 pounds plus. Uh, the tank, the BCD, uh, depending on how much lead weight you wear, whether you're in a dry suit, whether you're in a wet suit, the type of environment. So just the physical act of picking that up and carrying it into the water or getting out of the water, climbing uh, aboard a boat, uh, that's going to take some physical strength. Secondly, cardiovascular fitness. Um, again, most of the time when we dive, it is a calm event. Uh, we're really not rushing around underwater doing crazy things. But in my instance, I jumped into what felt like a raging river because of the current. And there are going to be times when you're going to be faced with a situation where to get back to the boat or to get back ashore, you're going to have to swim through some current. And that's going to push your body a little bit and that's going to raise the heart rate. It's going to test your cardiovascular fitness. Another awesome statistic to throw at you from Divers Alert Network. Those divers that show physical and increased cardiovascular fitness have a much less risk of decompression sickness. And that's because uh, post-dive studies in individuals with increased cardiovascular fitness shows less bubble formation post-dive. So what are some of the things we can do uh, to try and put ourselves in uh, a good situation? Well, many of you learned this during your basic open water classes, staying well hydrated, uh, water, water, water all the time. If you're feeling sick that day, don't dive. Just don't do it. It's not worth the ultimate risk to your total health. Smoking. I'm not here to get on my soapbox and uh, come down from on high to talk to smokers. Certainly we know that you have less lung capacity over time. We know that smokers are much more prone to cardiovascular events, uh, and that's all that I have to say about that. So in terms of physical activities, what kind of things should we be thinking about as divers? What could put us in the best possible situation to be a physically fit diver? We're certainly strength training. We're lifting very heavy gear. We've got uh, lead weight attached to us. We have a tank attached to us. So any type of strength training that uh, you could do safely at home with a trainer at the gym, uh, all well and good. I've been back doing the same thing recently over the past month. Regular exercise on a weekly basis, elevating your heart rate to about 70% of its maximum for a minimum of 90 minutes per week. Dan will tell us, the statistics will show that you would be physically fit enough to undergo most types of diving. There are some interesting discussions in terms of the timing of when you should work out and what type of workouts you should do around your diving schedule. And if that's something that interests you, please leave some comments down below. We'll be happy to put together a video after we chat to our friends at Dan. We'll talk all about what are the safe times for you to work out because there is some increased risk of decompression sickness with certain types of physical activities, post-dive especially. Mental fitness. Well, certainly there can be times when diving is a mentally taxing event. Uh, we see this all the time with new divers, particularly during their open water training. Uh, we can go from a very calm diver to someone who is in total panic and rushing to the surface in a heartbeat. 
and it's certainly something as, as instructors we're trained to recognize and deal with very quickly. Knowing what your uh, physical and mental capabilities are, what kind of stresses and strains you're willing to undergo either during training or during the type of dive that you're going to make. Therapy is kind of a swear word among some individuals, but you know, giving the stresses and strains of everyday life, your normal job, family events, uh, things that can happen. And I'm not ashamed to say that in the past month, uh, given how mentally I felt after this event, uh, number one, just dealing with what, what occurred, and number two, uh, the sadness and the uh, depression that came with what could my life be like after this, Talking to a trained individual was very, very helpful. And I would certainly encourage anyone out there who has those similar thoughts and feelings uh, to you know, put yourself in the best possible situation. Talking to a trained individual who can really help put things in perspective for you uh, can be a, a big deal. There are going to be some times on the day of the dive that you're just not feeling it. And there's kind of an unwritten rule in the world of scuba diving that anyone can call any dive for any reason without questions being asked. If you dive with a group of individuals who want to make fun of you, who want to peer pressure you into going to dive when you're just not feeling it that day, I'd find a different group to go diving with. And lastly, what I would say is if things just don't feel right mentally or physically during a dive, something is off, do not hesitate to call the dive, get yourself safely to the surface. During my event, there was a lot of denial in my own mind of what was occurring. And uh, thankfully, I was convinced to go to the surface, get out of the water, and be on the boat before the actual worst of my event occurred. And that's the best possible place to be. You do not want to be underwater when this occurs. So very soon, we're going to be releasing several videos of an interview session that we did with representatives from Divers Alert Network. They've been gracious enough to uh, give us some of their time to talk to divers out there. So uh, we had lots of questions for them, but what I want to ask our viewers is, do you guys have any specific questions or comments that you want to make for Divers Alert Network, either medical related questions or questions related to why should I consider buying dive insurance? I have my own Blue Cross Blue Shield, United Healthcare, or other types of insurance. Uh, if you're a professional diver, uh, Dan now offers professional liability coverage. Uh, certainly uh, any topic that you think would be interesting, please drop those questions down below in the comments.